let's talk about the Calypso 4. Uh, all Calypsos in this uh, configuration pretty well rebuild the same and uh, the, the parts kit is interchangeable with them. I'm not going to talk about the Calypso J for the simple fact that uh, the, the reserve seat on the Calypso J got brittle over time and I haven't seen too many of them that you know will will seat reliably. So uh, you know, other than replacing the O-rings in that end of a Calypso J, I would just leave it alone and uh, you know not count on the the reserve mechanism working. This is a great regulator. Um, they're I mean they're not scarce. Very plentiful regulator made for a very long time by U.S. divers, and it's often maligned, but I'm really not sure why other than it has kind of a unique uh, configuration, or your, uh, rather limiting configuration, I should say. You've got one high pressure port, and then all your low pressure ports are all on one side. It is a swivel, but it, everything has to come off to the right side, or I, I guess the left if you wanted your high pressure hose headed up. But, um, you know, I've seen these with adapters, you know, so you can get uh, your low pressure attachments off to your left if you like. but. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's just kind of a not not ideal. Uh, this regulator would have competed against the Mark V when it came out, um, and it is a similar design as far as it's a flow-through balance piston regulator. Um, it, it's very easy to service, as you'll see. And uh, uh, following up on some comments from the last couple of videos I made, folks have asked me to give more detail or to talk slower, but. Uh, so I'll, I'll try not to bore you as we go through that, and uh, uh, let's go ahead and let's take it apart. Uh, I did get this from an auction site, but what I did, uh, uh, which was a little different than the Aquarius, is I went ahead and took this one apart just to be sure there were a couple of features in it that were already there, so, which would make it easier for me to explain as we went along. Um, and also, it, it saved you boring camera time watching me try to unfreeze frozen parts. So. Uh, with that said, let's get started. Uh, first, uh, first things first, we're going to remove the swivel, which is held on by a split ring. Take your split ring pliers, remove it, and then this section will just slide off. So your swivel just slides off like so. Now, here's something interesting. We need to remove, uh, we need to remove this section, and you can see the holes in it. Now part of the manual says put a screwdriver or something suitable in the holes and give it a turn which is you know a little bit unusual but we'll go ahead and uh, give it a shot. I've, I use a brass rod but and quite often when you the first time you take these apart this is going to be uh, on here uh, solid. Uh, could be because of corrosion, could be because of uh, you know whomever decided they needed to torque it uh, over but um, it just simply unscrews. And as you get close to, uh, as it gets close to being uh, all the way off, you want to turn it facing up because there's two springs in the bottom of this and you don't want to lose them. I'll dump those out there so you can see them. Two springs. And those will, those are part of you know use for keeping it uh, keeping it solid on the IP setting. The next thing is you're going to take the adjustment orifice out of it, and that uses a simple Allen wrench, but there's a lot of threads to it, so it'll be threaded in there quite a ways. That one's in there pretty good. Probably uh, probably got some corrosion on it, but we'll get that taken care of. Yeah, it's got a lot of corrosion on it, but no problem. We'll get that cleaned up. A couple of O-rings. Like I said on the tiles before about laying out your schematic beforehand. It'll help you to uh, remember where each part goes. Next is the piston, which 
is simply held in by the o-ring. Now at some point, U.S. divers made a piston that was all made out of a, a nylon or a synthetic, but I haven't seen one of those in a really long time. I imagine they've all been replaced. Lowering on this piston. And we can, looking at this one, we can tell it's got some rust on there that we need to take care of. Now, next you are retaining the, the high pressure O-ring and the backup washer are right here. You're going to need a 9 16th socket to remove it. Now keep, when you're removing this, keep this in the upright position. I'll show you why here in a second. Once that's loose, you can remove it, and I'll talk about that in a sec. Inside, let me get the flashlight here. Inside, let me get a little closer. Come on. A little hard to see, trying to get a good focus on it. During the update, there is what is called a castle, or a castle nut spacer. You can see why. And this was a retainer that they added uh, several years after they started production, which was to help ensure that the second stage, or the high pressure seat, stayed in place. And there's a copy of the recall notice on there. I'm trying to zoom in on the high pressure seat so you can see it a little better. Get the angle of light just so. Hold my mouth just right. Now, there was a tool that was used to remove that high pressure seat. I don't have the tool. I've never seen the tool. Um, the high pressure seat is has an O-ring that holds it in place by friction and it is surrounded the nylon high pressure seat and in the center is a brass cone. So the easiest way I've found to remove it is to get a suitable size brass screw and I'll show you in detail as I pull it out. And I just turn it in there just barely enough where it grabs and then pull the seat out. There we go. Let me set the body aside so we can look at the seat here real quick. It's actually three pieces. You can see the o-ring on it and then you can see the brass center support. If that light helps, let me back up a little here. Maybe if I get in really close you can see it easier. There you go. Now the seat is not reversible because on the back side, which I'm showing you right now, it's cone shape. And it, uh, I say it's not reversible. Let me pull the center out and you can see. There's the two pieces there. Um, also, the O-ring on this seat is an unusual size and I've never been able to find that. So, I've not seen one that's bad necessarily, but just leave that one on there done, and you know, don't take it off. Leave it in place and then keep your seat and the seat carrier separated. We don't want to. We don't want to do anything with it right yet. Just put it to the one side. You. Next, we've got an O-ring on the outside. Remove it. Take off the yoke knob. And the center has uh, a standard filter and circlip, which. You need your circlip pliers to take it out. Now, on a lot of these regulators, this one's coming out easy, but on a lot of these, there's going to be a lot of corrosion around here. And sometimes, to get that filter out, you're going to need to soak it for a while. Soak it in, you know, vinegar water, hot water, simple green, whatever. And, you know, eventually you may have to dig around the edge with a brass pick, nylon pick, brush to get that out. But Eventually you will get that out. And then there is one O-ring here which is holds the filter in there solid. 
The last piece to take off before we get it clean is the end cap. Now, a lot of these are frozen in place too. Once again, if it doesn't come off easy, you're going to have to soak it maybe days in penetrating oil, hot water, what have you. There's various configurations that will help it get out. But uh, really, once we take the cap off, the only thing in here is an O-ring. And there's one O-ring at the base here. And this end, get the light back out. This end is where the reserve mechanism would have been put in. You see the detent for the reserve. You can see where the reserve arm would have worked here. Like I said, I don't mess with the J because I uh, don't see many of them that work because of the seat. But, I mean, the, there's O-rings that seal the J end of the seat of the uh, mechanism and you replace those which come in the kit and just screw it back on and it's there for aesthetics or uh, you know what have you but uh, I would not rely on the seat at all. So we've got uh, this part disassembled. The last piece I'm going to talk about before we uh, get it cleaned up is the carrier that holds the high pressure uh, or the O-rings for the piston. And later on on the assembly side, I will, I, I've got shown there's a tile that shows the correct way that this goes in here. But it's a little fiddly to get out and somewhat trickier to get back in. Oop, I tore it getting out. There is a, an O-ring and a Teflon backup washer. And like I said, I'll show the tile a little later. But when you reassemble, remember that the Teflon washer goes in the flat against the flat up here. The O-ring goes on the lower, th towards the lower threaded area. Now it is easier to put in the O-ring and then put in the Teflon washer, but I'll show, I'll, I'll kind of go through that whole clue so you can uh, see how that works. Um, now we've got everything apart. Um, I think we are ready to move on to cleaning. Now that we've got everything clean, we're ready to start reassembly, but uh, a couple of things to mention first. Um, the high pressure seat on the, uh, the Calypso is tough, and most of the time it can be reused. When you have it apart, uh, look at the seating surface where the piston mates to the high pressure seat, and you know, if the groove that the piston head has uh, created is really deep, or you know uh, oblong or shows it to be deformed probably best is to replace the seat um, you know you can also take the route of you know trying to surface the seat but that takes more time than I've got to uh, got for this video but maybe another one um, but normally it, it can be reused and uh, you know, once it's cleaned up get it ready to put it back together yeah, hopefully it'll be fine really won't know till we try to set the IP and uh, I've done nothing to this one other than clean it, and we're going to try it that way. So, well, let's move forward. Um, after you have your, your, your high-pressure seats ready, you put just a very little bit of lube around the O-ring on the perimeter. Once again, less is more here. You want just enough to have it look wet. Um, as a reminder, the flat brass part goes down in the regulator body with the small opening facing up out towards you and you may have to uh, it may not want to drop directly in the first time once you get it started then just take a, a soft uh, tool nylon wood dowel what have you push it into place now as usual and your seat is pretty well back in place. Next is the, the castle spacer. Uh, pretty obvious why it's called a castle spacer. Um, that was an update that US divers did and I, I won't go into details on it 
the, there's a whole briefing and the and the recall update for the dealers was all on the website, so you can pull that up for your own reference. Um, but when you're putting your uh, your castle spacer in, you want to be sure the points of the castle are facing down. The easiest way to do that is to just simply take your hex tool, let it fall around it, and it falls into place just fine. I went ahead and saved camera time by replacing the o-ring and the backup washer in here. Um, it's important to get those right because that's what is sealing the high pressure air or part of the seal of the high pressure air around the stem of the piston. So uh, take your time, you'll thread that in there. I'm sure you guys will figure that out, no problem. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in here. This is one of the uh, few times that USD actually specifies a torque spec. So it says that this says that this is supposed to be torqued to 40 inch pounds. So we'll get this threaded in here. Use our torque wrench. Zero it out. And torque it to 40 inch pounds. All right, we're good there. Now on the piston, remember this one had a lot of corrosion around it, a little rust, got it cleaned up. Um, you don't want to ever do anything aggressive to the seating edge. Take your fingernail, run it around there, see if you can detect any burrs, dings, what have you. Um, I take a 3M pad, which is really not aggressive on stainless, and simply just twist it back and forth a few times. And then holding my finger on the outside, I push the seat edge against it. Just cleans it up. Be sure it's ready for assembly. Now, your a lot of your movement on your piston is going to be in this area here. So we are going to put a little lube on there. Once again, it is not an instance of bigger the glob, the better the job. Less is more. You want a little more than making it look wet, but. We're also not packing wheel bearings here, so once you have that ready, made it with your mainspring. Oop, let me back up a little bit. Before you go, you want to grease this O-ring as well too, because it's seating it, the piston in the cup of the regulator body. Sorry about that, mess that up. Caught it in time. There we go. All right, now we are ready here. Now before you put the, the cap back on, where it's going to be sealing against the base of the piston, you want to put the Allen screw back through here and use a little, little silicone or you know crystal or whatever you want to use on the threads, help it move smoothly because this is what we're actually going to be making our IP adjustment with. Now you want to go ahead and through the, through the Allen screw down until it is just past the bottom opening here. The bottom hole probably isn't focusing very well. Move in a little closer. It's just past, the, the flush part of that is just past the bottom hole. Next you're going to take your big spring, little spring, one inside the other and drop it in like so. Turn your regulator up. Get that started. I don't think there's a torque spec for this cap, but we uh, I checked the manual while you're doing it, just to be sure. Snug it down. All right. Next we're going to put our cap on, and since this is a swivel, and does a lot of swiveling, we want to put a little silicone, or crystal glue, whatever you want to use on it. Just enough to make them look wet. There we go. Swivels back in place. And then we want to put our retaining ring on that holds that on there. 
And remember on the retaining ring, you have a round side and you have a flat side. The flat side should be facing up so it's you know fitting into the groove on that seal correctly. Be sure that's on there good. You don't want that to come off. Alright. Good. Last part is O-ring. Rough side of the filter faces up. And then once again, flat side. Or I'm sorry, actually this is the flat side. That's the round side. Makes a difference. You're going to put that back, your snap ring back in here. And take your wood stick or your plastic nylon, what have you, and just be sure that that is in place correctly all the way around. And then if you want to just double check, you can use your external pliers and just be sure that it's spread out all the way into the groove. Last thing is, put the cap back on. Or those of you working with J-Valve Assembly can follow the manual and work with it. Like I said, I'm not going to mess with it because of the problem with the J-Valve seat itself. That simply goes back on there. There's, uh, you don't need to overly tighten it. There's no pressure against it really, so just snug it down. And we are ready to take our Calypso 4 over and get it set up on the setup bench and get the IP set on it. Alright, we're ready to set the IP on our Calypso 4 and probably better explain a few things about the way I've got it set up here. Uh, since I work on so many regulators, uh, my bench is set up to be where incoming over here is supply air from the air bank, which goes through this regulator, which goes uh, allows me to adjust between 0 and 3500 PSI output. So the way you'll probably be doing it is um, you'll have a scuba cylinder here, this being the valve with the regulator attached. So it gives you a little familiarization, which will be once you've got it attached to your cylinder, we'll be leading to an IP gauge. Now, here's the part you can't forget. Is before you, the first time you turn this on, you have to have in the loop somewhere on the low pressure side, you have to have a pressure relief device in place. If not, and for whatever reason you've got a high pressure seat failure um, and air comes back into the low pressure side, um, you know, at full cylinder pressure, it can be a disaster. It's just going to blow your gauge, it's going to blow the hose, and if you've ever had a low pressure hose blow up it, and whip around, uh, it's a very dangerous situation. Uh, a little pressure relief device like this, if you're doing a lot of regulators, this comes in handy. It's about six or eight bucks in the store. I, I don't know what they're at. Probably six bucks in the store. You screw it right into any of the available low pressure seats. It will relieve due to spring tension to prevent overpressurization. You can also, out of any of the low pressure ports, you can put a good working second stage, works just fine. Some IP gauges have one built into them. So, whatever you do, have one in line. Now, on my setup, on you can't see it, but on the back of this gauge where it's teed into the air, there is one of these devices in the T, so if it gets more than 170 PSI, it opens up, takes care of it. So. Okay, with that said, we've, uh, we've got our regulator set up here, we've got it connected to our intermediate pressure gauge, and what the factory manual says for this is at 3000 PSI supply pressure, you should have at least 125 PSI intermediate pressure. I, I think a little more plus, or I think I wouldn't go any lower than 125, I think if you were at 130, you're going to be fine because it's a flow through balanced piston regulator. Your IP is not going to fluctuate that much as your cylinder pressure changes. So, um, one of the kludgy things about the uh, the Calypso line is 
this is the port where you would normally screw in your second stage. Well, you have to unscrew your hose and or I've got a plug in this one and use the Allen wrench to adjust the intermediate pressure. So, be that as it may, let's take a look at this one. Um, I haven't, uh, uh, I did it preliminary and I think I've got it set pretty close, but we'll double check it and see. It will take some trial and error on your part. If for whatever reason, referring to the factory manual, if you have the Allen head all the way backed out and you don't have at least 125, you need to put a shim, which is a metal shim, between the spring and the piston base. Um, and if you got questions about that, you can give me a call. Pretty self-explanatory, but uh, there's shims in the store that are made specifically for the Calypso um, if you need them. So let's go ahead and I'll get the branch line air on. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see on the regulator here, I can, I can adjust pressure up and or down depending on what I'm working on. We've got 3,000 PSI there. Take a look at our gauge, our IP gauge. We've got at, I'm setting right at 125 PSI, which for this is good. Now, I recommend when you, once you've got your IP established and it's stable where you are, you're going to need to cycle it, which means purging and not necessarily quickly, but you're going to need to purge the air off of it so you see how well your first stage cycles. Now, some folks will say, oh, you need to do that 50 times. Some people will say, oh, just a few, whatever. I do it about 20 times, let it set, turn the air off, bleed it down, come back, do it 20 other times. If you refer to a person who I would consider an authority on the subject, if you read Pete Wolfinger's book, Regulator Savvy, he'll say, in his opinion, it takes two to 300 cycles to get a good high pressure seat uh, set established. So I, I take his word for it more than uh, anybody else's idea. So I'll show you real quick, like if you need to adjust the IP up or down, you want to shut your air off, which you'd be shutting your cylinder off, and then bleeding all the air off out of the regulator. Remove the port plug or the hose if you've got your second stage screwed in here, that's just fine too. Inserting your Allen wrench. Now, small movements are best. I wouldn't go any more than one turn at a time. Screwing it clockwise on a piston regulator is going to decrease your intermediate pressure. Screwing it counterclockwise is going to increase your intermediate pressure. So I would turn it, you know, one full revolution at a time, put the plug back in it. Slowly bring your branch line air back up. Check your intermediate pressure again. Cycle it a couple of times. <clears throat> Looks like I'm, you know, right at 125 PSI, which I would say that you've got a Calypso 4 that's a uh, ready to put the uh, 1085 second stage on it that we did in the last couple of videos and you've got a regulator that's good to dive. Hey thanks for watching the video um, if you have questions or anything uh, like that give me a send me an email if you need uh, service kits or parts for your Calypso please check out the uh, website store at vintagedoublehose.com thank you